Hello everybody, Olav here, and welcome to the first Tutorial Tuesday of 2022. Talk about massive alliteration. Uh, today we are going to start our uh, first Blender tutorial. Um, I know most people tend to go with, oh, well, we'll make a donut for their first Blender tutorial and stuff like that. That's kind of the go-to, kind of the go-to thing for most of starting blend people starting out on blender but having been over 250 pounds at five foot six i don't think a donut is what we want i instead uh, we are going to do a bottle um partially because i have a lot of friends that were are asking about how to make bottles in second life and that's something that i've done quite often um but we're not just going to restrict it to what's in Second Life because Second Life is very um, Second Life is very limited on things. Uh, they limit the number of vertices everything can have. Uh, the more vertices, the more um, the more issues you're going to have. The more the more land impact it has, the more and and stuff like that, and the more likely it is to cause lag and stuff like that. So we're going to kind of do a two for two for. We're going to make a photorealistic bottle, uh, but we're also, I'm going to also make sure to notate where, where we are different, where you want to stop if you're doing this for Second Life. So what we're going to be making here today is we are going to be making this Coke bottle. Um, we're going to make the entire bottle. We're going to make it with the, the little bumps and stuff on along the bottom here, along the top here. We're going to make it so that we have the Coca-Cola label just etched onto the actual glass, not on a label. Because back in the 50s, they didn't have labels. Um, we're not going to model the uh, we're not going to model the the bottle cap. Um, that is something that uh, a lot of people have done, and I am probably going to upload that somewhere, like either on Google Drive or something like that, and just say, and just have that sitting there so that you can download it. Um, if I did that, and I remembered to do that, uh, the link will be down in the description below. But we're going to make it so that we can actually have the cap on, off. We're going to make it so that we can have the Coke in it, or we can have it empty. Um, and everything like that. We're gonna have it so that it's got the, 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 uh, the, the era accurate kind of green haze, kind of green tinting along the outer edges. So no matter where you look, you, you're gonna see those, those, that tinting on the edge there. Um, the whole nine yards. We're, we're going to do the whole shebang. So let's get into the recorder here. Let's actually bring up the proper, the proper everything. And we're going to go to file. We're going to go new project general. Uh, sure, we can go ahead and save it. We didn't really change that much. Now, my default cube is already gone. If you have the default cube, um, if, if you, if you have the default cube set up and everything like that, uh, go ahead and click on it and either hit X and delete or just click on it and highlight it and hit the delete button. Now we need to set up a few things here first, because first, when you, when you're modeling a bottle, you want to know what the bottle is going to look like. You want to have an idea of what the bottle is going to be. Um, now for that, I always recommend doing a Google search and looking for, you know, an example of a bottle that you want to make. So now one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into edit and preferences. Now, right here you have add-ons. And then you want to go up to the search bar up here. And you want to... Uh, and you want to say import. And you want to make sure that import export. Import images as planes is checkmarked. You want that on so that you can bring just automatically import a any 
you know, you can just automatically import a an image into Blender as a plane rather than creating a plane, putting the image there, getting the image sized up right and everything like that. Bring it's you can come up to file, say import image as planes and you want your reference. Now, if you come to if you press one to get your front view. Um, you're going to see, well, it's, it's turned weird. So let's shift Z, uh, let's say R for rotation, Z to rotate, to lock it on just rotating the Z and 90 degrees, but it's gray. You're not seeing anything. Well, that's because you actually have it in the, uh, the model, uh, the, 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 you're viewing the objects without any materials. But now you say, oh, but the material's backwards. Well, that's easy. You just rotate Z, R, Z, and 180 to rotate it on the Z axis, 180 degrees. Now we want to grab you on the Y and move it back. So, now we say, A, shift A to add in a mesh, and we're going to want to add in a cylinder. Now, Here's where you kind of have to fiddle with things a bit because it depends on what your model is. Ours is a ca classic Coke bottle, so we have about a 0.22 height or centimeter, uh, 22 centimeters tall, and everything's in meters here. So, uh, and then it's like seven centimeters at the bottom. So 0 0.07, 0 0.07, boom. There we go. That is the prop, the appropriate size for a Coke bottle. Now, if we say we're going to really focus on just the bottom, the, the, bo the bottom size here. So, all right. And we've got that moved back far enough that it's not going to interfere with anything. Um, it's not intersecting our bottle at all, which is good. So now we're ready to go ta uh, tab into edit mode. And we want to be selecting faces. So up here in this corner here, you see different select options. You have vertices, edges, faces. We want faces. Except for we actually want that on the on our cylinder. Now we're going to say scale you down to just about there. I'm going to grab you on the X so that you're hiding just that. Now we're going to come up and we're going to grab the top. And most of the time you're going to want to work in front view. It's just going to make your life a lot easier. And we're going to grab that top one and we're going to bring it all the way down to where the first change is. And we scale it out so that it's about the same size as the bottle. And then we hit E to extrude up. Click. Once you're there, size it out so that it's looking accurate for the bottle again. Extrude up. And you want to stop a little bit below where the bends are. So we're going to kind of angle you in and we're going to get the angle about right for where those for, for where the bends are. Now we want to say if we come up all the way up here, what is that? That is about 0.16. That's about 0.17. So 0.17 to 0. Okay, so 0.17, half of that would be 0. 0.085. Boom. We hit S to scale it down. We hit E to extrude, 0 0.085, scale it up, and that's a bit higher than what I wanted. So, okay, we're going to say there, and we're going to say extrude up, we're going to say scale out just a little bit for this little bump here, extrude up. Scale in to here. 
And now we want to say extrude up. We want to figure out what that height is because this is going to be, this is one where we want a break halfway through it. So that is about 0.09, so it would be 0.045. Let's say size out just a little bit, extrude up, 0.045, size in. And we want to say up, size out, so that we are just getting... there so we now we're gonna have so that's where those bumps are gonna be that's where those those little bumps are gonna be now we say extrude out again just a little ways and we want to make it so that those are pretty much even because once we add the bumps here where those where those triangles extend to we're not gonna be able to adjust that that bevel which is gonna be kind of a pain now we can say uh, actually, we want you down here where the change happens, and then extrude up. Uh, nope. Extrude up, and size, not another extrude. So we extrude in, size in, up. This is pretty much straight. Now we say extrude up. Sorry. Extrude, extrude up, because now it comes out a ways, extrude up, and this actually comes in a little bit, which is kind of weird. Now we say extrude up, very short ways, because there's a severe bevel there, and then extrude up, and boom. So now we have... Our, bo our basic bottle, bottle render done. We have the basics of it done. Now, we may want to en enter in uh, some some uh, some loop cuts just to make our lives easier, uh, like a loop cut between here. So, Control R for a loop cut. Now you see this yellow thing show up. This is where, you know, if you choose an edge, it says, okay, this is the edge where we're going to cut. We're going to cut clear across the loop. We say yes. Click to say, yep, that's the one. Now we can place it somewhere. We're going to place it about here. So now we have a cut there as well. I hate that. I hate that. I hate that when that happens. I hate when that 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 jump little jump thing happens. It's it's weird as hell. I don't get why it, why it does that. So all right. Now, uh so we have kind of a boundary there. We're going to want another loop cut about here just to give us a good boundary. So, all right, now we are ready to say, select all of these. Now, this is where you part, we part ways as far as, as far as Second Life versus doing just a really good blend. So, a really good blend should have, you know, on this bottle in particular, it's going to have bumps. So, we're going to have vertical bevels as well as horizontal bevels. Always do your vertical bevels first or your horizontal bevel or, or do your verticals first otherwise you're going to have disjointed faces and really weird uh in influxes and stuff like that and it's just it's going to look weird so with second life you don't want you usually don't want to put in too much detail if you put in too much detail you're going to have a lot of vertices you're either going to go over the the number of their their limits on number of vertices you can have in an object or you're going to wind up having, um, or you're going to wind up having a bottle that is like, has a land impact of 54, which is just insane. So, um, we do have, so we want to select, uh, these and we want to, every other one we want to angle out. 
So, uh, we could go through and we could say just select every other one, or we could select all of them, and actually... We want to, uh, we want to hit this little x-ray thing, because you see we've only selected half of them. But if we deselect, and with this, this box and box, this x-ray view, this toggle x-ray, we can select through everything. So now we want to go to select. Okay, so yeah, we want to select all of these. But we want, uh, we only want to affect every other one. So we say select, check or select, which is, allows us to select for, e deselect one for every one selected. We say select, select loops, edge loops, boom. Now we have everything selected uh, all the way up. So now if we do control and uh, box select around the stuff that we don't want, We will have all of the, uh, where we're going to put all the bumps and stuff like that on the Coke bottle, we're good. So now we can say S for scale, shift Z to affect only the X and the Y. And we can bring those out. I think we're going to do it a 1.05. Yeah, 1.05 looks good. So we say boom. So now we have these jagged bumps. Now if we hit control B to bevel, we've got the start of a bevel, but we're gonna need more segments. So if we go up to 12, 12 is usually about where I leave it. 12 is usually pretty good. And we make sure to hit this little button here that says clamp over, uh, clamp over lamp, lap. Because if we don't, well, now you see how they're over how as we're as we're affecting a wider uh, a wider area, it's they're overlapping and stuff. If we hit that, it stops it. It says, okay, you can't go over this point before you're going to start overlapping everything, and you don't want to do that. You do not want to do that. Now we can affect how much of a bulge. If we increase the shape, it goes out towards a, a point. If we decrease it, it conca it causes concave, causes it to go concave to a point. So I think about 0.75 should be good. We have, you know, we'll have the bumps, we'll have the, the nice beveled bumps and stuff like that without, without really affecting things too much. So there's our bevels for that. Now again, that is just for a for our specific thing here. Um, this is for the 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 realist more realistic blend. Uh, as far as Second Life, you're not going to want to do that. You're 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 not going to want those extra edges because nobody's ever going to see them, and it's just going to add to the complexity of the item and the land impact cost or complex character complexity if somebody's wearing it. So now we want to go along all of our horizontal edges and do bevels as well. Now this one we're gonna we're gonna go back down to shape of 0.5 because that's about really all you need for most of these bevels. Now you can, instead of doing a, uh, a a loop cut or a loop select, you can hit Alt, click on that edge, and it'll collect. It'll select the whole ring. It's really just down to what do you prefer. So boom. Now the reason why we gave them gave these things this this uh, this extra boundary is because we can't bevel something like that. Now we can do a bevel here, but we can't really do a bevel where those point, where those fine points are. This is the big one that we want to bevel a ways as much as possible. 
And we actually want that bevel to come in a bit more. Almost, we want it to look more like a corset because the old Coke bottles had that very, very severe bevel in the middle. Um... Don't click out of it. Uh, so we're going to say points. What if we do point eight? Point eight. So it's still got that. It's still got a bevel to it. It's still got a kind of rounded bevel to it. But it is much more severe. Now, of course, then we can say, well, that's right up against there. We don't really want that. So we can kind of just grab that on the Z and bring that down to here. To give us room to bevel this edge. And again, we want this one to be 0.5. So yeah, so now we're starting to get a really nice thing. Interesting part about that, that curve in the Coke bottles, while I while I go through and bevel the rest of these. Interesting point as far as that that uh the Um, the, the curve, that is what's rumored to have gotten Jimmy Carter into the Navy. He actually saw, he actually had flat feet, at least as far as the rumor goes, he had flat feet and he rolled his feet over a Coke bottle in order to basically to get that curvature to the point where he would not be, uh, he wouldn't be prevented from joining the, the, the Navy because of his flat feet. So if we say curve there, Let's say come up here, bevel this. Ooh, that's weird. That was weird. Why? Oh, because this is this is this is where the clamp was. That was where that that severe clamp was. That was what prevented it from going any further. Okay. So all right, we come up here. We say boom. We say bevel you up here. Bevel you. And it's just beveled to the point where it makes sense or looks good to you. So, for example, this one's going to be a shorter bevel. Whereas this one's going to be a bit more. And this one's going to be... <laughs> Don't just click it. Alt-click it. So now we have... A pretty decent looking Coke bottle. Now it's not perfect because you can still see the segments and everything there. In order to get rid of those, we do two things. First, we say shade smooth, and that gets rid of most of them. That gets rid of most of them, but it won't get your shading quite right. If you come down to this green triangle, however, you can click on normal so you can say auto smooth at 30%. That's going to ensure that your shading always looks proper. So there is the bottle as, as as we have done it so far. As we're 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 kind of that's that's where it's really looking good. Now again, a slight different thing as far as second life versus versus this. So first things first, we're going to want to Take our bottle, we're going to say, get rid of the X, X-ray. We want to select the face. We're going to take this upper face. We're going to delete it. Then we are going to come out of edit mode. We are going to duplicate. We're going to click right away. So we don't have, we don't need to, to do anything with the duplicate. We don't want to move it. So we're going to make the first one just Coke, second one, Coke bottle. Now, of course, with Second Life, you're, you know, it doesn't really, Second Life doesn't play well with alphas and transparencies and stuff like that. So 
you're not going to want to add in a lot of detailed transparencies and, and, and everything like that. But because we're doing this uh, as, as just more of a blender type thing as well, we are going to come into the Coke bottle. We're going to hide the, the Just Coke. We're going to enter into the Coke bottle. We're going to select them all. And we're going to say E to extrude, but we're going to click right away. We're not going to move it at all. Now we're going to size it up by 1.058. Boom. But that's kind of disjointed everything. It, it's, it's, made, it's, it's made it off. Well, those, those new faces are still selected. So we say grab Z and we come down until Basically, we come down until we are even with that. That looks good. Now, we can say scale shift Z just to make sure that it's everything is properly outside. Now, before we go any further, we're going to mess with the materials a little bit. So, we're going to say new material, new assign and we're going to then make a second material we're going to select invert and we're going to new assign that's going to make our life a whole lot easier as well later on <laughs> trust me this is this is where yeah you you want to make sure to to do this to get these 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 different materials down so, all right. Now we can say bring in the coke. Now, if you say if we say take care of that, boom. Now, it doesn't look like anything's going different as far as when we add and distract the coke, except for if we say you. Let's just bring you down to a brown. Now see, as we get rid of that, boom, basically that, that, that Coke is just, if we say scale shift Z, that Coke is basically right there, just on the other side of the inner wall. And that's where we want it because otherwise you're going to have uh, a, a stark difference between, you're going to see like it, it's. Basically, Blender's going to play it like it's two different faces and two different, like it's a like it's a vacuumed wall instead of a solid wall. So we can get rid of the Coke thing for now, uh, and we're going to go ahead and work on actually texturing texturing this stuff. So we're going to switch our 3D viewport there. Switch this to the shade editor. So, boom. Now we've got this. And we're going to do this. And we're going to say, get rid of you. And we're going to put in a glass BSDF. We're just going to say, boom. Now, IOR is... Uh, index of refraction. That is how transparent, how much does it bend the light as it's going through. Air is a perfect one. That is the standard. That is that is kind of where you start with image of refraction is one. It is perfectly, it is crystal clear. It is absolutely transparent. Uh, glass is usually 1.5 to 1.7. So let's say 1.5. Now we're actually going to copy this and we're going to put this in the second one as well. So boom. So now we have a really good refracted, uh, re refracted bottle. So, I mean, the, the, the bottom here is 
You know what? Let's let's try something here. Let's try something here. I want to say select invert. Now I want to scale you everywhere but the Z. So this one was like right about here. How does that look? That looks pretty good, but the bottom is now like massively massive. All right, I forgot to click on that. So we want you scale on the Z, scale you in, you are about here. Now we grab you on the Z and bring you in. So now the bottom isn't like super, super thick. It actually looks pretty normal. And... You know what? Alright, let's bring it just inside there. Just inside there. So you still kind of have that double wall a little bit. But it's not as, as horrible. So now we come back in here, we say, select all of you, let's go you on the Z, bring you down to about here, grab you on the Z, up to there. And we could say, that's a good question, because the, the bottom isn't just a, 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 a solid piece. So let's delete that face. Let's come in here so we're not looking at things too too weirdly let's select this ring no not that ring this ring oh right uh edge select that might help so if we go to the vertex and we say now we can say um Merge at center. Of course, I could just take that center piece and just kind of bow it up there. So now we do have kind of this this inner inner kind of just just inner done. So all right. So now we've got a really nice bottle. We don't have that that massive bottom. But it's difficult to see. It's kind of difficult to see because we only have the one light and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to ma actually make it so that we have an environment in the background. Now, if you come to the little camera uh, under render properties and come down under film, you may have it transparent. We, we don't want it transparent. But we don't want it just gray either. So if we come into our shading property panel, and instead of object, we come to world. Well, now we can change this. So we could make this just like stark white, like we're, we're in the construct in the matrix. Um, we can play around with the strength. But it's always best to hit shift a to add search for environment texture now this is where you can add in an, a an hdri basically it is what tells what tells blender the surrounding area is so i'm going to open this and i'm going to go to my renders and i'm going to say the empty warehouse we're going to connect that to the color and boom, we've got that. Now, if we hide our light, all of the light sources that are that the the bottle is reacting with are from the actual environment. So it's all of those lights. It's the light coming in through the door. Everything like that. Now, if you look at our if you look at a reference model, there's there's a green tinge to it, and there always was, and that's that's one of those interesting things. There was always this green tinge to the these old school bottles. So let's switch back to object. 
So we're going to want a diffuse BSDF in order to get that green haze. And we're going to need a shade, uh, a mix shader to mix these shaders. But, oh no, it just like mixed it all together uniformly and that's, that's not what we want. That, that doesn't work. So of course, the, the, the secret to this is we add in a Fresnel. Now you maybe say, what is a Fresnel? A Fresnel is the experience, the, the, the unique properties of kind of this, this almost creating an outline. If you've ever seen a picture of, um, if you've ever seen like a picture of the earth from outer space, it's got this lo lovely little blue circle around it. That's where the atmosphere is, is so dense. And so you're, you're passing through so much of it that it gives the earth this, this blue glow. Now, of course it doesn't have, you know, the green, the green haze isn't there as much when it's not, you know, when there isn't a white background. And then we have play around with the, uh, the, the, the IOR about 1.2, 1 1.1 .1 to 1.2. We say vibrancy. We want it very vibrant. Now, if we increase that, it gets a lot more pronounced. If we can increase the, the saturation, it gets much, much more pronounced. Let's just go a straight green. So yeah, now we have that green, that green haze just on the edges and it's just on the outer edges. That's why we kind of played around with the, that's why we made two different, um, that's why we made two different materials, one for the inside, one for the outside, because if we take you, you, and you, and we copy them into this one, Let's say, all right, plug you into there, plug you into there. Well, now we've got it, that green haze on the inside and the outside. And that just really looks weird and doesn't look quite right. It should only be on the outside of the glass. Cause again, if we're, if we, if we don't have that, di those two different materials, Blender is going to perceive it as, okay, you have two pieces of glass with a void in the middle, not one solid piece of glass. Which we have one solid piece of glass. So, yeah, we've got that lovely green haze around it. Beautiful. But, I hear you say... We're missing something. We are like majorly missing something. We are missing the Coke, the, the Coke emblem, the, the, the Coke signature. And you're right. We are. So we're going to say image texture. We're going to say another diffuse. We're going to say plug the color into there. We're going to open this. We're going to say, go to the bottle render. We're going to say Coke 2 is the one we wanted. So now we're going to need another mix shader. To go to here, we're going to want to paste this onto there. But we're going to want that there. So now we should have the Coke Coca-Cola emblem there, but we don't. So we come into, uh, we tab into edit mode over here in our preview window. And we go up to UV and we go UV unwrap. Now you, we want to come over here and instead of shade editor, we want UV editor. 
All right. So now you see how it's uh, it's unwrapped right now. It's unwrapped very very weirdly. If we say unwrap as a cylinder, well now we get something we might be able to 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 play around with a bit more. But oh no, now we have all of this Coca-Cola Coca-Cola all over the place. So let's switch back to shade editor. And instead and under the Coke 2 image we're going to say instead of repeat we're going to say clip so now it is clipped to just the single image and stuff like that so if we come back to the uv editor we can kind of say okay stretch on the y to get the that down there and we can grab on the X to rotate around. So we're going to want it on there. Now we stretch on the X to kind of stretch it out. Grab on the X to rotate it back around. So from the front view, we should have... Looks like the A should should be just on the edge there. And the C should be just on that edge there. So maybe stretch that a little bit more there. And we've got the Coca-Cola emblem there. That's a little bit low. So we come back in, we say grab on the Y, and we adjust the height. So now we've got the nice Fresnel... We've got the nice lettering on the outside, the whole nine yards. Awesome. So now the question is, how do we make it so that we actually have Coke in it? Well, first things first is uh, on the Coke, we want to tab in there. We want to select it all. I'm going to sign that. Boom. Now you see we can say scale this. Shift X or Shift Z. So that it's just there. Now we had it just right for just the right size for that that inner wall. Because again, we the you're you're not gonna see the inner wall there. You're gonna see just the coke. Now, of course, we do need to come in here. We say take that Coke bottle out. We're going to hide the Coke bottle. So where do we want it? We want... Let's move it aside here. So the Coke should be right up to about here. So let's switch this to the 3D viewport as well. So that we're saying here. Now we're going to say everything there. But we want the faces... Now if we say, delete the faces, boom, that's looking good, but we have this big gaping hole. We don't want the big gaping hole. So we say, take this ring, fill, and boom. So now if we bring back in our Coke bottle. Let's say grab you on the X. So you are back inside properly. Now we have a bottle full of Coke. But again, we're not quite done. We are not quite done. We still have some shading to do on the actual Coke itself. So we're going to go back to the shade editor. And we're going to take the Coke. Now, we, it should not be, you know, as you can see, it should not be perfectly clear. It should be partially transparent. I mean, we should, I mean, now granted, that is like really lit from behind. I mean, that's on a white background. So we're going to say 0.75 transparency. 
0.75. So if something's really close, you know, you're not going to see like the door and stuff behind it. If the light shines through it, you're going to kind of see a little bit of transparency. Um, if we say the subsurface color is kind of a darker orange. So the subsurface, we're going to want you more of a... 0 0.005 so you don't really show up I suppose yeah we're gonna want 0 0.33 uh, 0 0.33 for the the IOR because that is what what water basically is so now if we look at this this way we've kind of got this brown looking thing until we get something behind it that's really kind of showing through if there's light behind it, we're still kind of struggling with the light, though. We're str still kind of struggling with the, the light. So, what if we say transmission, boom, transmission roughness. Let's still really kind of, it's still really looking way too, transmission, tr too transmissive, isn't it? So what if we say, bring that up to 0.95. What if we say 0 0.95? 0 0.95, now we kind of have this, this kind of murky brown there. If we have, you know, I mean, and, and I get the feeling that what that is, is that that is really what they're showing there is really lit from behind. So now... If we have, if we hold it up to the light, we really see it through it, and it's not just brown; it's kind of this brownish, orangish concoction, which is good. That's again, that is what we want. But we're still missing something right on the surface, because if you've ever held a glass bottle of Coke, you will know that hey, there's bubbles. It is a carbonated beverage, so. Uh, we want to come to our shade editor and we want to do uh, add in two Vernoy textures or Voronoi textures now, this is where things get kind of complicated a bit okay so we want the top one uh, scale of 100 and everything and all of these standard settings are fine now the bottom one we want instead of F1 we want in sphere radius and we actually want this one at 105 so just a little bit of a difference and then we're going to add in a math node the distance in the top radius in the bottom and we want it to a compare now we're going to take this color and say I want the texture because we're going to add in a color ramp we're going to say you there we're going to say you there now you see we kind of woo well that's not right that doesn't look like so if we say 0 now you see where we're getting those little like those little those those little semicircles those little like hollow circles against basically those are bubbles of air so where the where the 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 seal is around the bottle is going to be the circle is going to be white everything else is going to be a little bit off now Right now, it's set. the The black is set for black for pitch black, which we do not want. But now we have bubbles, and if you look at it through there, through the light, you're really seeing a lot. You're you know you're really seeing those bubbles pop. Now, of course, we need a cap. We need a, a metal cap. Um, and as I, uh, I, I, as I think I stated before, I'm not actually going to show you how to model a cap. It is tedious. It is time consuming. It is annoying as hell. 
what I'm going to do instead is I am going to upload it to like a, a Google Drive or something like that and I'm going to to make it so that you can download you can just download that so yeah like I said with the with the massive amount of light now of course if we say take come to the world and we say look that's a bit much let's take it down let's take it down to 0.25 so now you see where the light is hitting it that's where that green refraction is coming from so less light you're not going to see it as much but if you have a lot of light shining right on the front and basically coming from this from this angle yeah you're going to see a lot of that green showing up because there's light pouring through it so i'm going to say file import uh obj and we're going to say bottle cap 2 now we're going to say location 0 Sorry, I wanted it just the cap. So we're going to say zero, zero, zero. And then we're going to say grab it on the Z, lift it up. And we're going to go into a top view. And we're going to scale it up so that it's actually covering that. And then it's just a matter of getting it basically on where so those teeth should be just digging into the cap just just clamping onto that uh, that 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 glass so we say scale it up until that is just hidden and we say grab it on the Z to make sure that we are keeping it kind of just down around the, that top. So, boom. We've got our cap. But, it's not quite a coat cap. So, we're going to say... Um, so, actually, we just need to mix RGB. And we need our Coke 2... Thing. So we're going to say color to there, color to there, we're going to say the factor is alpha, and we want the cap otherwise to be red. And then we can just say rotate U on the Z until the Coca-Cola is facing the same way. And there you have a nice clean bottle of Coke. Now, in order to get your camera to where your view is, okay, let's let's switch these let's switch these back real quick. So we're gonna say you, we're gonna say shade editor. So all right. So let's say we want our camera to be right right where what where our viewport is, right? We're, we want that to be. So if we say Control Alt Zero. Boom, your camera is locked to that. Now, control zero. That's much better. That looks much better. That looks good. Now we're going to come into the world settings. We don't want that. Um, 0.5 wasn't bad, but I think 0.25 really kind of sells it. 0.25, maybe, maybe. 0.35 and of course we can actually shift our background around if we say take a mapping node into there and we say texture coordinates there generate into the vector and now we can say rotate on the Z so that that window so now see that really bright window that's actually going to be behind it 
so you're gonna have that green shimmer, that green haze around the edges of the bottle. Kind of a lot like this one is. We're gonna say, move you there, move you in. Of course, if you zoom in, you can really see the bubbles. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to. And if we hit F12, we get a render. As far as Second Life goes, Second Life texturing is very different because Second Life only uses three texture nodes. Um, Second Life only uses the diffuse, the normal, and the um, and the specular. So, if you're wanting to add like if you're wanting to add textures and stuff to that, you need to do it either in the diffuse, the basic, just the basic color and combine everything down. So if you want to add like snow to grass, you would take your grass, you would put your snow, layer your snow on top of it. You would combine, then export those as a single picture file. Same with this. If you were going to say, you know, if, if you know, you wouldn't be able to do the, the nice glass look or anything like that. If you wanted it brown up to a, you know, if you wanted it a, a brown bottle with the lettering, you would layer those two on top of each other and map it to, uh, to, to your model. Texturing is very, very difficult, especially when it comes to Second Life. As far as making the bottle, if you're going to make it for Second Life, you do the, the very, very easy uh, bevels around the side. You, you, you deal with the horizontal bevels, not so much the vertical bevels. You only deal with the vertical bevels if you have like a square bottle and you're, you know, you really want to, you really want to use your, your edges and stuff like that to define the basic shape of the bottle. Anything more than that and you're going and and you're 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 really going to kind of get into trouble because you're going to have so many small little vertices for stuff that you really don't need. If you were if I was going to do something like uh say a textured bottle where there's like scale mail on an entire bottle, that's where your normal map comes in because your normal map is going to make it's going to tell the light where basically tell the program where where each face is facing. That's how I did a lot of my bottles in Second Life was use normal maps to do that. But as far as just, as far as making a glass bottle, modeling it, texturing it, everything like that, that's how you do it. Um, now I'm realizing this has been about an hour long endeavor. Um, I'm probably gonna be able to cut some stuff out here and there, I don't know, but um, I'm going to try and make sure to to section it off so that it's like, here's the basic modeling. Here's, you know, getting the details. Here's getting the, the you know, getting, getting everything done properly. Um, and yeah, like I said, from there, um, you can do what you want with it. You can, you know, you are, there's, there's tons of possibilities. Um, you can model anything using that tactic but for me that is where we're going in for today um remember if you like the video press the like button if you're new here hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so youtube knows that you're that you're interested so that i know that you're interested and if you want to make sure to keep up to date with when we go live or when we do put up a new video uh check out the social media links below the facebook and the twitter if you want to see these types of things as they're being recorded, uh, check out our Discord server down below. Um, that's I kind of do a, a screen share with uh, with Discord while I'm while I'm recording them and stuff like that. So yes, um, if you if you if you did something like this, make sure to uh, and you post it online. If you make a, a bottle like this, let me know how it turned out uh sh tag me on twitter leave a comment down below let me know how you found this uh if there was one part that was a little bit difficult to follow by all means let me know 
uh, that will help me make some that will help me make better things in the future. As I said, all the social media stuff down below so that you can stay tuned for more from Olave Productions. Cheerio!